So you got your brand new iPhone 13 and you're enjoying it, you're loving it, and maybe you're one of those crazy people that doesn't get a screen protector or a case. I've seen a lot of you in the comment section saying that you don't wanna do that and that you never do that. Well, uh, in the past, if you've had a problem, you can always repair it, it's not that big of a deal. And I do see a lot of you out there with those cracked screens, which to me is a non-starter. I'm not gonna have a phone with a cracked screen, especially if I spent all this money on it. But some of you live with that. But a lot of you don't. You either go and get it repaired, either at a store, or sometimes you repair it yourself. Now, repairing it yourself is something that can be done. You can literally go on Amazon and buy the screen replacements. As a matter of fact, I did a video where I tried to replace the screen on an iPhone 10, and it went hilariously wrong. If you missed that video, I'll leave a link in the description. Don't forget that one. That's, that's a good video. But for the iPhone 13, if for some reason you crack your screen or need to replace it, this could be a problem unless you go directly to Apple. Some of you might automatically do that, just trusting Apple, but there are so many kiosks and places around that can save you a tremendous amount of money getting a screen replacement. But if you have an iPhone 13, you might not want to use them. And I'll tell you why. Right after this. This, this is, you know you listen to, to Travis. <laughs> What up, players? Welcome back. And for all you new people, welcome. My name is Travis and I do tech videos every single week and have a blast doing them. And today we're going to talk about the iPhone 13 and how replacing your screen can break your face ID. That's a big one. So phone repair guru here on YouTube uh, does, well, what his name says. He repairs phones, takes them apart, and recently took apart a couple of the iPhone 13 video, uh, phones and realized that when he replaced the screen... Face ID stopped working. Now, I'm gonna show you a couple of clips from his channel um, because in order to understand exactly the intricacies of this, you're gonna to need to see exactly what he did. And then he did a follow-up video because I know there's gonna be some questions. So let me just show you what he did in his follow-up video, the, the segments that are really important so we can talk about exactly what's going on. Proximity sensor is not connected at all. And in this video, I'm not gonna connect them. Just so you guys know that the proximity sensor has literally nothing to do with the face ID now. The proximity sensor is not connected at all. It's just the screen that did not come with this phone. Set up Face ID, get started. So Face ID is not available. It's, it's not working at all, okay? So this is not the original screen and that's why it's not working. So we're gonna take this off. Now we can remove the screen. We're gonna take the actual screen that belongs to this phone and we're gonna put that on and we're gonna click Set up Face ID. So now I'm gonna go through the Face ID and set it up, click Get Started. As you can see, it shows my face. All right, so we scan face ID, that works. Now I'm gonna scan my face and you can see that it's just unlocked. Again, no proximity sensor installed, nothing else. Face ID works independently, it doesn't need this anymore. There we go. So it's a non-genuine screen, that's okay. We know that. And we know that the front proximity sensor, the front microphone and the front ambient light sensor don't affect face ID. So when we try and go, and unlock our phone using Face ID. We can't. At all. That's pretty crazy. Now let's try and reset Face ID. Set up Face ID. Get started. Face ID is not available. Try setting it up later in settings. In my mind, that's pretty definitive. And one of the things that he mentions in one of the videos is that um, this is something Apple has done kind of in the past and have fixed it with updates but he doesn't think that's gonna happen this time. The right to repair community has been at war with Apple for years. And if you're not familiar with what that means, it's actually right on the tin, so to speak. Right to repair is basically saying that if you have a device you purchased and it breaks, you should be able to repair it or take it to somewhere else other than Apple to fix it. And that seems reasonable. I mean, that, that's pretty much the thing with everything. Like if you buy a car, you don't have to take it back to the dealership you got it at to get it fixed. You, you don't have to do that. You have the right to repair it. Apple's trying to say that for the most part, if you try to repair it elsewhere, they're either not gonna warranty it or some features don't work. And in this case, Face ID is one of the most important features of the iPhone. Like, what? Some might say this is an oversight by Apple. Totally, totally possible. We're gonna put that on the table as a possibility. However, in this particular case, it's not like this is the first time this has happened. And based on what's said in the YouTube video here, and they're much more of an expert in this than I am, this seems intentional by Apple, and we need to think about this from a larger scheme. Now, from Apple's side of things, of course, they wanna make sure that you're getting the best panels and have the best experience. They don't want that to be tainted by some cheap panel you might get at a little kiosk and maybe installed incorrectly and kind of mess up the customer experience. I know that that's kind of what they're thinking. On the other hand, 
if you purchase something and you don't have the money to get it fixed, and maybe your screen is really messed up, you have to go to one of those kiosks. Are you willing to give up Face ID in exchange for that? My guess is no. And for the business owners of these kiosks and these little stores, this is kind of devastating to them. Quite frankly, this is not necessarily a large amount of money for uh, Apple. I mean, screen repairs for Apple, I'm sure do a little bit of cash for them, but it's a drop in the bucket compared to everything else they do. So are they really protecting their customer? Are they protecting their bottom line? Or are they just being mean? My guess is the truth lies somewhere in between. I've been in these corporations and these corporate meetings uh, for multi-billion dollar companies that make these type of decisions. And I can tell you from experience that nine times out of 10, they are thinking about the customer with a little bit of how much is this gonna cost us sprinkled in. So my guess is Apple isn't being vindictive in doing this, even if the end result appears to be that very thing. So how does this affect you? Well, if you have an iPhone 13 as it stands right now, if you're gonna get the screen repaired, you gotta go to a store. That's not necessarily a terrible thing. As a matter of fact, it's not generally speaking a good thing with the exception of the fact of how long it takes when you go to an Apple store. I don't know if you've been to one lately, but man, the lines to get in are just crazy, especially with the pandemic going on. So from my standpoint, I think of it as a bad thing. I'd love to hear what you guys think down in the comment below. And with my experience, when I did the uh, iPhone 10 screen replacement, it was very difficult for me. I would never want to do it again. Uh, even though it would be technically cheaper for me to do it, it just wasn't worth my time. And, it, and I broke the face ID. So I would never do it myself to try to save the money. And there might be times where I don't have a lot of time to go to an Apple store, give them my phone and be without my phone for perhaps hours on end, depending on how busy the store is. You can go to a kiosk, I've done this before, and get it done in like less than 30 minutes. And that seems pretty reasonable. So is Apple trying to take the choice out of your hands and not allowing you to repair your own device if you got some butterfingers and didn't get a case and screen protector? Listen, it's your choice whether you want those things. But at this point, I'm just gonna say, if you have an iPhone 13, and I don't know if this applies to the iPhone 13 Pro or Pro Max yet, I'm assuming it does, but even if it doesn't, just protect your phone. I mean, it's a couple dollars more. It looks sometimes better if you get a great case. I mean, you look at mine. I, I kind of like the way this looks. Uh, and you don't have to worry about this as a problem. Maybe Apple at some point fixes this, but maybe not. Tell me in the comments below what you think about this exact issue. Would you take your phone to be repaired? And by the way, make sure you watch that video where I try to repair an iPhone. And I'll see you next time. Peace and love.